Hey guys, Grady's mom here with cooking series volume 12. This is a crock pot recipe and it's also pretty budget friendly. Uh, depending where you live, I know ground beef can really vary. Here I find it's a little bit more expensive on the East Coast. So um, here for the 85% uh, lean, it's about $5.99 a pound. I know other places in the country, I've heard it can be as low as $3.99 a pound. So here it is a little bit more expensive, but if where you live ground beef is cheaper, it would definitely be more of a budget-friendly recipe, and it's really easy. A lot of these things most of us have in our pantry or our fridge. Uh, again, this is a crock pot recipe. So I'm gonna be using just over a pound of ground beef. I'm gonna be using some carrot and some celery, obviously not all of this, but just some carrot and some celery. One small onion four small potatoes, or you could use uh, two larger potatoes, or four small as well. You could even use the baby potatoes, and in that case, you'd probably need about eight of them. You're gonna need some jarred marinara sauce of your choice. I just have a tomato, basil, Trader Joe's marinara, but you can use any brand. If you don't have marinara on hand, another option is you could use a small six ounce jar of tomato paste, but you'd have to mix that with two cups of water. Um, so I know some people have tomato paste on hand if it's easier for you to use that. Again, you'd mix one jar of that and you'd whisk it in with two cups of water. You're gonna need some garlic powder, some red pepper flake, which is, this is optional because it is spicy. I just add it for a little bit of heat and I use very little, and you're gonna need some salt and pepper. So let me go ahead and get my crock pot out and get this beef frying up in the pan and I will show you how simple this is to put in the crock pot and forget about it. Okay, so step one is you're gonna to wanna to get your ground beef uh, browned up. The reason I brown it before it goes into the crock pot is so I can control the fat and I wanna get all the extra fat that cooks off the meat out of the pan before it goes in the crock pot. Otherwise, if you put the meat in raw, uh, all the fat is going to sit right in here and it's going to soak into all of, of the dish. So I just wanna get all the fat out. I also think the flavor is better without all the fat in it. So I'm just gonna brown this up really quick. Again, the crock pot's out and I'm gonna go ahead after this is browned up and get my veggies all prepped and ready to go into the crock pot. Okay guys, so ground beef is done. So I'm gonna take the ground beef and I have a colander set up right in the sink. I'm gonna get it into the colander. And you can see some of the fat already dripping off. Hopefully that doesn't fog up too much. Let me just clean my lens. You can even see the film of the fat that's on the bottom. So I'm just gonna let this hang out in there so all of the fat can kind of drip out of the bottom and then we'll be left with just meat. I'm gonna go ahead and get my veggies prepped. Okay guys, so I have a plate. I'm gonna set here so I can put all of the prepped veggies on so I can pour it right into the crock pot when I'm done. And don't mind any toddler noises in the background. I'm filming this on a Sunday morning. So Grady is right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna get these. You don't want them too small because since it's a crock pot and it slow cooks, if it's too small, it will just pretty much dissolve in the mush. So you want a little bit um, of chunkiness to the pieces because since they're slow cooking, um, you know, they break down if they're too small. So that's the celery. I just used three small stalks. Next up, we're gonna do the carrots. These are just the crinkle cut ones that I purchased last week. Okay, so I have roughly about a cup, maybe a little bit over a cup of carrots. And these are just the crinkle cut ones. I'm just cutting off like any imperfections, like a little piece of stem right there. And again, we don't want them too small because they're gonna slow cook. So I'm just kind of breaking them down a little bit so they're still chunky. So that looks pretty good. So those are gonna get added to the plate. And then I have my little onion, which I'm gonna do last, and then I have my four small potatoes. I'm just gonna use a smaller knife here just to peel off if there's any like little imperfections or blemishes. You know, nothing too crazy, but if there's just any little 
things like that that I can peel off. I'm going to do that, but I am going to leave the skin on. Um, I personally like the skin on. It's pretty much where all the nutrients are, and it adds a little bit kind of more of a rustic uh, look and taste to this dish. Um, and I personally don't mind potato skin. I know some people don't like the skins, um, but I don't mind them, especially in slow cook recipes. So I'm just peeling off any little weird marks. So as you can see, most of the skin is on. So these, I'm not gonna chop too small because again, we don't want them to turn into mush. And this dish cooks for about six hours. I don't think I've made this dish in, this, in the crock pot that I have now. I've made it a bunch of times in my old crock pot, but uh, my new crock, new or new to me crock pot, I've noticed does cook a little bit faster, probably because it's new. The other one was pretty old, it was like pushing 10 years old, and I used it all the time. So again, just kind of chunky pieces, and depending on how big your potato is, obviously, you can gauge. But these <clears throat> these were small potatoes, guys. These are not big potatoes. This is also a really good meal that you could do if you're doing like a crock pot prep series, which I will be doing. The, the issue that I'm having trying to do one is Grady's only at school three hours, as you guys know. Um, so that only leaves me pretty much two and a half hours with driving time added in to film videos. And it's hard to do a whole crock pot series meal prep video in two and a half hours. So here are my potatoes, going to go on the plate. And then onion lastly, there's not a whole lot of knife work for this recipe. And the nice thing about crock pots, as you guys know, is you just set it and forget it. Love that, and I love that on a Sunday because I've just had crazy busy weekends. Today is no exception, which is why I'm filming this video so early in the morning. And then I'll just have it ready to get edited. So these I'm also going to cut chunky like this. Obviously they're going to break up a bit, but I'm not going to dice them because they'll just disintegrate. And I always personally, I like chunky for rustic kind of stew things like this. So there we have the prep for this poor man's stew. So now I'm going to go ahead and get uh, the tripod set up by the crock pot and show you how easy it is to dump all this in and then forget about it. Okay guys, we are at the crock pot. And I'm gonna start out first and get my meat in there. And again, all that extra fat is pretty much gone. Um, Cause beef has a lot of fat, which most people know. So I'm just gonna spread this out evenly. And then I'm going to get, I think I'll do my sauce next. So I have this jar, which is I don't know, 90% full because I used a little bit of it for dipping uh, mozzarella sticks. So I'm just going to add a teeny bit of water to this jar to get the rest of it up. So you just add a little water, shake it into the jar, and it kind of loosens the extra sauce. Just a little water. So sauce is in now, so I'm just going to go ahead and spread that over the top just a little bit, nothing fancy. We just kind of spread it around a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and get my spices in. So I'm going to do a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt, not a lot of salt, but the veggies do need salt because obviously the veggies don't have any salt. Now here's my red pepper. I'm only going to do, I'll show you guys how much I'm going to do. Let me just get this little piece of, let's see here. I'm only going to do about this much. You can see that. So, I don't know. Not even half a teaspoon. Right in. Because just a little bit goes a long way for that. And then for the garlic powder, I'm going to do some kind of generous shakes. You could also add uh, fresh garlic, guys, or minced garlic in the jar. If that works better for you. So the spices are on top of the sauce. Lastly, I'm going to put my veggies in that are all prepped. 
The key is with crock pot is prep everything before you get ready to put it all in. It'll make your life a lot easier. So all I'm doing guys is folding it, kind of working the bottom, bringing it up to the top so the veggies get coated. And the, the marinara sauce will thin out a lot as soon as the heat hits it. The sauce is actually cold because it was in my fridge since it was open. Because like I said, I used some of the sauce to dip our mozzarella sticks in. So nice and coated like that. And it's funny, it's not even cooked, but it already looks stew-ish. So it has that stew look. I think the potatoes do that. Uh, another nice add-in would be some mushrooms. Um, I would just cut them in half. I wouldn't slice them up small because mushrooms are a fungus and they kind of soak up and disintegrate. So if you have some mushrooms that you need to use up, I don't have any. If I did, I would probably throw a few in. Um, but mushrooms give it a nice touch and add some hardiness to it. So that is it. So it's nice and coated. I'm going to put my lid on. And it's set for six hours. I'm going to hit start. And again, we have low, six hours. Um, I will probably check it halfway through if I'm home. If I'm not home, I'll have my husband check it because he will be home. Because um, you're going to want to give it a nice stir roughly halfway through or as close to halfway through as you can get. Um, and, you know, just stir it and move the bottom to the top. And then in about six hours, we will be good to go. So I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. All right, guys, so we're just about at the three-hour mark. So halfway through, so I'm going to give it a stir, and it's coming together perfectly. And the sauce is thinning out nicely, and kind of all the flavors are getting into all the vegetables. The potatoes are softening up nice. It just smells so good. And I've made this a million times before. It's excellent. Really kind of comforting meal. So that is just a quick peek of what it looks like halfway through, and I will show you what it looks like at the very end. Okay, so six hours has gone by and we are all done. Let me just get a spoon here and see how nice and thick it got. It's almost sort of gravy-like versus broth-like. So it smells delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and get a bowl plated up. And I have some cheesy garlic bread that I made on the side. Looks so good. Mm -mm -mm. Yum. Let me get this over here. Let me go grab my garlic bread really quick. Just some Texas toast garlic bread. And this is going to be our delicious hearty dinner tonight. And it just smells amazing. Can't get too close because it'll fog up. So I'm just going to dig in with my bread and my poor man's stew. I really hope you guys enjoy. Definitely give this one a try. It's one of my all-time favorites. Every time I make it, I always kick myself that I don't make it more often. But I'm definitely going to be adding this one to the regular rotation in the cooler months. So, again, budget-friendly, super delicious, lots of flavor, and a real, real, like, a major crowd pleaser on this one. So, again, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day, and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye.